This goes in the back room. <laughs> I talk when I do things. <laughs> no, I just put it in the back room. Here. When I cook, I, I don't want stuff around the table. Okay. You could throw the garlic in here. I did. Oh, did you? Yeah, and the parsley. Yeah, I saw it. Here, okay. take over. All right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. ah, thank God. In between, you gotta sit. Shows a 102 year old grandma about to blow out her candles. Well, at least she tries to. And she's got a great sense of humor oh about gosh. it. And is quite spry at 102. I love the smile after that. She's like, whoops, she's adorable. Adorable. general attitude about life, right? Yeah. I mean, Don't say. hold grudges and always try to look on the right side of life. Because if you hold a grudge, honey, and you keep thinking and thinking and thinking, then finally you say, but what did I get mad for? So eventually that's going to disappear, right? I don't believe in being mad at anybody. I usually get up around seven. Get up, make breakfast, then do my bed, straighten out the house. I don't like to sit down. I like to walk around and do what I have to do. I could mop the floor, but I can't wring the, the cloth because I don't have the strength in my hand. But I try to do whatever I could. Then I go in and get washed and try to relax. Put yeah. them in a dish first and beat them up, and then I'll put them in. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, you can tell me. Oh, you need a couple more eggs in here. All right. I take every day as it comes. So when there's a good day, I take advantage of it. She likes her pillow because she likes to be able to look out the window. I think I could do great. But the marshmallows, there's only a few. They're good. If I get a chance, I go to the casino. <laughs> so what's wrong in that?
I don't say to somebody, either you're Jewish, you're Italian, or you're black, or you or whatever you are. I always welcome them. Did you learn that from your parents? Oh, they my father had an open house, yeah. And you said how your mom used to feed people. She used to take food off the truck that my father used to pedal at night. And if there was bananas that were a little ripe or tomatoes or something, she would take them and go down the street. She knew there was a family that didn't have any money, not that we had money and give it to their family. Even people have changed. They were more friendly. If you were sick, they came to visit you and they would bring you a chicken or a dozen of eggs. And believe me, when they used to come with that food, it was really welcomed. Get a can of paste for, okay. in yeah. that pantry there. Yeah. You know, when you're opening that can, it sounds like the dog is barking. <laughs> Small as I am, I never had to worry about having a date or anything. There was always somebody that was willing to take me out <laughs> and have a good time. One day last week, Al Lee's daughter was here. She said to me, I want to ask you something. I said, yeah, go ahead. What do you want to ask me? Did you have sex before you got married? I said, no. You don't do things like that when I was growing up, you know? Oh, my God. But to each his own. My father did not like Lee. And he used to say to me, but why, why are you going on with him? He's not for you. The day I was ready to get married, all dressed up to go to church, he said, you still have time to say you don't want to marry him. I said, no, I want to marry him. There was a lot of things he did wrong, but he started to make money, you know, painting and doing all that stuff. It went to his head and changed completely. Everybody used to say to me, what a wonderful husband you have. He's such a good tipper and, and he's so nice. I said, you don't know my husband. My husband is Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He's not what you think he is. So it's hard to think about the way that Grandpa Lee treated Noan and the way Grandpa Lee treated yeah. his children. It makes me really sad. Yeah. I was just recently married to him. And one more led to another, and he hit me so hard, and so hard that I went backwards, and I, I didn't fall because there was a chair, and I grabbed it. So I said, this is the first and the last time you're putting a hand on me. I grabbed a hold of Sally. I had Sally. I didn't pick no clothes, and I left the house. Well, I got down to the forest for the corner. All of a sudden, I felt my hand on my back. I said, what are you doing? Put your hands off of me. I want you to come back. I said, you hit me once, you're never going to hit me again. He never did. But whatever he did was worse than getting a slap in the face. You know what I'm saying? I want you to have an abortion. I, want... I said, you took me once, and you took me twice. No more abortions. I said, that's it. No questions. He wouldn't even ask me. Come on, I'm taking you out. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you taking me? Oh, I want to surprise you. And all the while, he was planning on taking me to a woman that would give me an abortion. I said, this is wrong. 
So, you know me, I said, well, he's my husband. I, what am I going to do? So I had the abortion. And that was the time I was in bed for a week. With all that my husband did against me, yeah. I still don't hate him. All right, now the sauce is cooking. You want a whole can of paste in here? Yeah. All right, I don't need that. I make sure my oil is hot, and then I put the meatballs in. Not hot. No. Not even warm. <laughs> <laughs> Should I load her up? Yeah. Good. There were times when things were tough. When she was born, I had no place to put her. And so we took out a, a drawer of the viewer. And that's where we made her bed. How did you support all those kids? You had five kids. I was doing alterations. That helped me pay the bills and all. Because he didn't want to give me no money. I went to work in a factory making shirts. Working with my sister Angie, God bless her soul. She said, I'll get you a job. You work next to me until you know how to manage the work. So when my sister gave me $5 for the week, yeah. and then I said to her, Five dollars. I worked all week with you. She said, oh, all right, wait a minute, I'll give you more. This was my sister, God bless her soul. I said, oh, no, this is not going to work. I said, Angie, I want to go on my own. OK, she said, that's fine. And the first week I was with her, I made $20. And I thought I was in heaven. I said, all right, that's it. I'm not doing nothing else with anybody, partners. If I got to do something, I'm going to do it on my own. And that's what I've been doing all these years. And I find that I'm better off. Why didn't you ever get remarried? I've gone through too much with one of them. I don't want nobody with me. But you know what? You got two other wives who used to come here. So one day he says, come on, let's go on the couch. I said, no, oh, yeah, come on, I'll tell you where we'll go. There's the door, get the hell out of here, I said to him. I finally had to tell him I wouldn't allow him in my house after a while. I mean, but why should I? You want to come in just to have sex and then go out? He had his own wife. I said, leave me alone. Do you want to hear so I took the pitcher, aluminum pitcher, with light aluminum, picked it up. I said, you son of a, you don't leave me alone, I'm going to hit you with this. He said, ha, oh, you never do that to me. I said, I won't. Huh? Took the pitcher and I hit him on the head. I think I still got it downstairs, the pitcher that I got to oh, bump in it, you know? When did you start praying to St. Anne? Oh, I must have been about 14 years old because I had some kind of a sore on my feet and I couldn't get rid of it no matter what I tried in medicine and thing. So I started making a novena at the church. Every Tuesday you had to go there for an hour. And I prayed to St. Anne and my, my feet got better. I never had that again. I don't ask for nothing special, but when I'm disturbed or I didn't know what which way to turn, I pray to her and I get my results. But I really am blessed. Thank God I have my family. 
good grandchildren, great grandchildren, which I look forward to on a Sunday that they come and they all respect me, which is more than a million dollars. How you doing? How are you? Yeah. Looking yeah. good. Thank you. Where are you going? Birthday girl. Good, good. Hey, no. Oh my gosh. The queen. It starts from, from uh, her father, George. Who is her father? Henry or George? Or Romaine has got the most calcium. Oh, yeah. Oops. You guys want talent? Well, you're very sensitive to that. But yeah, it has a little bite going down. You got the recipe for artichoke soup. Where'd you get the recipe? I'm lying. Sorry really for reaching there. We're at the back of the bus. <laughs> I was thinking there was something I was going to say about it. Lots and lots of love. Love is the best. Your number came out today. We say every, every Meal. day. You know that? A blessing. A blessing. Yeah. You know, four? Uh, so nice to lean on your boobs. I know. <laughs> And a lot of people get away with things that shouldn't. But not to let them feel bad. I would just let it go. And that's how I survived. But I don't believe in, you know, I don't hold grudges. But maybe sometime I should get them. And whoever comes, give them a kick in the ass. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, God, that Almost. was a good blow. One more. Yay! Yay!